go. I think he's still researching. Perfect. Time for a review. When it comes to NES gaming, it's really hard to keep track of all the games. Some of them were good, some of them were bad, some were boring, and some were fun. But when you speak about Nintendo, it's really hard to ignore Mario. And when you're speaking about Mario, you can't deny that the one that had the biggest impact was Mario 3. The game was originally released in 1988 in Japan, and we were lucky enough to get it in 1990. It's a good thing we didn't have internet back then. Could you imagine having to wait two years for a game, knowing that it was out in Japan and there was nothing you could do? Oh, ignorance is bliss, I guess. Mario 3 brought a whole new level of gameplay to the table, and one of the biggest innovations had to have been the Tanuki suit. It's gone down in hist- Um, it's gone down in history as one of the favorited upgrades of all time. What do you want? Okay, okay, I'm recording here. Is there something you need to ask me? Well, I did some research like you asked, and I found some pretty sweet stuff. Found the perfect job for me. Um, job? What job? Manager. That's why I'm here. I'm here to make sure you're doing your job. Oh, okay. Thanks. Uh, well, I'm doing my job, so can you just sit there quietly and don't touch the chips so I can finish my job? <laughs> okay. So, wait. Anyway, back to the power ups. The game had other power-ups, and they didn't do so well in history. It had the frog suit and the hammer bro suit, and of course there was the classic flower suit that's always been in every game. There were other upgrades in the game besides the power-ups. There was an introduction to the world map now, where you could select in which order you could tackle all the levels, and in some cases you could even create shortcuts to make your adventure a little less challenging. The graphics also had a huge upgrade in this game. All the characters look beautiful, and the land is so detailed. Not to mention, this is the first time that we see Mario looking like the Mario we've all grown to love over the years. It's just... Okay, man, look, I, I really need... Call me manager. Manager? What? Call me manager. It sounds pretty sweet. Okay, whatever, manager. Sweet. Yeah, I, I think that you being a manager is, is the perfect job for you. It's just I need one thing and... What are you doing? Nothing. Uh, look, I, I just need you to do one thing. I just need you to be quiet so I can finish the my- The phone is ringing! Hello? This is super duper important. I have to take this. Monitor! Now there's a theory about Mario 3 that I came across when I was doing my research on the internet. And I gotta say, it sounds pretty spot on. They say that Mario 3 is actually a theatrical production. Now before you wave me off and pretend that the theory is crazy, I really do think it has some kind of value. Look at the backgrounds. Those things are all bolted on in the back, and you actually see the screws. They have shadows! And what about the platforms? They're being held up by what looks like steel cables. Even the moving platforms have some kind of little path. They don't just float in space like they do in other games. There's also the fact that if you're on top of a white block, all you have to do is hold down for a few seconds and you can go through that white block. This allows Mario to run behind all the set pieces, kind of like you can do in theater. And if that doesn't convince you, just think about this. What's the opening scene in Mario 3? Oh, it's a curtain rising. I don't know. I think this theory has solid ground to stand on.
This game has a really great learning curve. It starts off rather simple, and then it doesn't ramp up too quickly. As you get further in the game, you become better, and as you become better, the game gets more difficult. It's not easy for programmers to do that, and Miyamoto got it perfect with this game. By the end, this game makes you want to pull out your hairs because of how hard it is. Yet, it's still really fair with each one of the deaths. World 8 is where things really start to ramp up. The difficulty level just skyrockets. This place is hell. Quite literally. Sorry about that. That was William Shakespeare. He wanted to be on the show, but I told him, you're not super duper famous enough. <sighs> you weren't talking to Shakespeare. Yes, I was. No, you weren't. I saw you go through your phone and turn on your ringer. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Besides, Shakespeare's been dead for over a hundred years. Oh, then it wasn't Shakespeare. It was his brother. Shakespeare. Just give me that! No! Go, go find something else to help with the show! Okay! World 8 is horrible. No wonder Bowser wants to take over the Mushroom Kingdom. The place is surrounded by fire and lava, and it's always so dark. And in that one level, you've got that asshole son that follows you around, trying to stick its spikes up your ass? Jesus! And the water, oh my god. It's brown. It's... It looks like... That's it. It's toilet water. It is toilet water. Mario's an asshole. He's been plumbing and sending all the toilet water towards Bowser's place. This place is really a shitter, isn't it? So what are my final thoughts on this game? It's perfect. I mean, the game has great level design, awesome music, and it's a really good challenge. The game's gone down in history as the best Mario game, and if not, the best platformer of all time. You don't need me to tell you how great it is, so stop wasting your time. Go out and play it. It's really easy to get a hold of, too. You can get it on the 3DS, you can get it on the Wii U, or you can get an original copy. They're fairly easy to come across, and they're not too expensive. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my review, so stop wasting your time! Go out and play it! Until next time. Want some?